Latin theater has definitely uh, just been a big part of my life and I've really enjoyed being part of it through all four years of high school. I know many people can attest to the fact that it's very welcoming. You make so many good friends in the, uh, in the arts. A lot of people expect us to put on a really good show and then when we do it, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, you can't even like top it off. It's just, it's great. The Secret Garden is a story about um, Mary Lennox, who is a girl from India, whose family and everyone she knew um, died of the cholera, and she um, was, I think, the lone survivor um, in the area where she was found, and she was sent to live with her uncle, Archibald Craven, um, at Mistlethwaite Manor in England, um, because that was the only family she had left. It's about her journey when she enters this very depressed household that's haunted by spirits and about how she ends up kind of bringing light to the house and happiness. She um, starts learning about all the different secrets of the manor, um, all the people who live there and their troubles, and of, of the story of this, of this woman named Lily and Archibald and their love story. I'm Lily in the Secret Garden, and she is the mother of Colin and the aunt of Mary. We all became our characters and lived in this amazing world, this magical world. I think of theater less as a direct interpretation of a piece of literature and more as an event, an event that happens in space and time. That's sort of my, I think my goal or my job as a director is to shape and uh, imagine the event and then facilitate the team of artists, your actors, your designers, that whole team facilitate their work in, in realizing that event. And make, turn that uh, chaos into energy. I suggested Secret Garden to the panel, the committee that chooses the shows, uh, based on a number of reasons. First of all, it's my favorite show next to Les Mis. I, I've loved this show since the first day I saw it in DC. And um, it's, it's deep, it's intellectual, it's challenging vocally, and um, I knew we could do it. It's not often done. If you could go online on YouTube and find, uh, look up Secret Garden, it, you can't find high school productions because I think vocally it's a challenge and dramatically is. And it, it's just a, a reach for a lot of groups. But I felt like we could do it intellectually because of the kind of students we uh, have here at Latin and the focus. Um, vocally, I knew it was right. All of this part two. Hold it. Yes, uh, this is a change. It's a little small for just, I need that extra bump. Those who add a little bit later, the servants, my assumption is it's hard to find it if you're not clear of what they're doing. So let's all just do it. Yeah. Okay? That makes the most sense. Unity. Community. How many of you say Remember, it's all, 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 all. I hear you. I'll, I'll turn, but it's everybody. You ready? Yeah. Sit up. Here we go. All. And. When you're preparing a show of any size, but especially something this as big as the Secret Garden, um, you want to a make sure you've got the right team in place because you're going to have to delegate, um, and you're going to have to know that you can trust um, the team. And so that goes down to the designers you're working with, um, the stage management team you're working with, but also casting and sort of knowing that if you put the right pieces in place you're not going to have to micromanage people's performances. You will leave Saturday week! I think that a lot of what Mr. Cosper does is tells you how he imagines it in his mind and then lets us work it out in the way that we feel works with our characters. So there's much more choice for the actor 
involved. He's really getting them to really focus on character and purpose and meaning. So even it from ensemble people, you know, you have a name, you have a history, you're going somewhere. What did you do in the past? You know, what are you doing in the future? And that's really enriching the whole experience. You know, it's not just about the principles, um, you know, telling the story, but everybody is telling a story. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody is bringing something to the table. And with that, you know, wholeness and oneness, we're, I think, able to accomplish some really cool things on stage. It is this really strong, like, point across the room and contact somebody, heads up stage. That's a beautiful, like, specific moment where, like, you, like, you look like, you're, like a real person in his body in time and space. Um, but next to that, a lot of y'all look like, why am I here? I'm only in this number and I hate being here. Um, which is really interesting and fun to watch for an audience. <laughs> Um, now that's not to say that all of you are doing that, there's, there's other people on stage who are making choices about being real people in time and space, but everyone needs to be making those kind of choices about who you are and how you live in this world, okay? Um, we're going to go back and we're going to keep looking at this number for a bit to tighten that stuff up. You um, have to also, try to figure out what's going on behind the script, what's going on underneath the words. What happened before the show opened? What happened before this scene started that they're then carrying into this? Because we all have things that have happened to us in the past that affect how we act in the present. This was not me. It's something I, I, I saw happening and liked and so sort of tried to encourage subtly. But um, oftentimes the role of Archie is played as very angry. Um, and you don't, he's not very likable. And Michael Juilliard brought something very sweet and wounded to the character that I thought was really um, a revelation. We bury them. We put their things away. We remember what they said. We, we talk to them sometimes in our minds, of course. Can they hear us? And then one morning when we think we're over them at last, we find ourselves in the ballroom, knowing full well we've been here all night, and we come to the painful conclusion that we've been dancing with him again. I don't understand. Nor will you ever. They're not gone, you see. They're just dead. I think it's, I think it's challenging and different in the fact that um, I have to play a different age. Um, I, have to play, I have to play with a handicap, and that's been really fun to work with. Um, physically. Um, it's a change of mood and I think it's a change of um, in, in a change of roles that I get to play um, within like my movement style and my age and um, my comedic angle and my dramatic angle as well. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a challenge but I'm having a lot of fun. I didn't know it was a musical before I found out we were doing it, and I know a lot of people were kind of in the same boat. So it surprised me how well everyone took, the, took to the story and understood and kind of put themselves in the positions of people that we didn't really know ahead of time. I will say I auditioned for Dickin, the part that Ethan Holtzman got, and Ethan Holtzman is a freshman. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't too confident in my audition anyway. The talent of First of all, Ethan Holtzman as Dickon, what his even his audition blew me away. Like he could have gone on stage and performed it that night, and he would have gotten a standing ovation. Theater environment at Latin is really welcoming to everyone, uh, especially like as a freshman. I was really welcomed with open arms and I made so many friends immediately because of doing this show. And it's really like, it's a, it's a brotherhood and it's a family, like really. I, I love every single person in the cast and the cast really becomes your family, which is awesome. Mary, look 
The cast, I think, is incredibly varied. And that was the, one of the first things I noticed when I came to Latin. It's not like a set group of theater people. It's everyone from across all different aspects of the school coming to put this musical together and not whether, not like taking into account like if it's dumb or if it's um, girly or whatever. It's it's all these different sports sports players, all the different debate kids, everyone from across the school comes together and puts this cool thing together. So I, I think um, while it is fun, it, it also brings um, all sorts of people together, and that's one of the coolest parts, I think. So it's a pretty wide variety of people who are involved with technical theater. We have a lot of freshmen, and we have girls and guys, people from all walks of life. It's pretty cool. <laughs> um, this year, we've got some new faces, which is always good. It's a little challenging, though. Um, you know, we lost Charlie, Willis, and Sarah Waller last year, and Allison Bonner as well, and a few other seniors that had really spent some quality time in theater and had really, they just knew what they were doing. Um, and so we're starting the cycle again, you know, trying to train new people. Um, so we've got Sarah uh, acing our props, she's doing a great job. And then, like I said, the assistant stage managers with Hunter, Jack, and Andrew are really stepping up. For tech rehearsals, we have sign-ups at the beginning of Secret Garden, the same time the actors audition. And we had, this year we had a massive tech crew. Oh my goodness, we had a lot of people, like 22 or something. Um, and then two weeks out, usually, we have the tech techies come in to watch a run through of the show and understand the storyline. And then we get set pieces and costumes, and that's when we start working all the transitions to getting everything on stage where it's supposed to go, marking where it's supposed to go, and getting everyone to learn their parts. And it really doesn't come together until about dress rehearsal night, because that's when we have enough practice. Because these actors know the show front and back, but the techies have to learn the songs and the show and the cue and the set pieces all within two weeks. So it's a lot for them to do. But it starts off where you're clueless, and then in the same way that the show does, we make strides so quickly and just get it down pat. We have this one really big transition that happens um, backstage behind the mid-stage traveler while something while the bridge scene is on and everything is going on back there we actually had to rerun that a bunch of different times um, I think Mr. Cosper had us tweak it maybe a few times to get it to the way he wanted the way he saw it should look and um, ultimately it ended up really great though so I think it was definitely worth it in the end truly well made, so, sincerely well how about your friend Mary go Hurtling towards us at a terrifying speed. Uh, if you go slow, it should be steady, and it's like one side is going faster than the other. Like, yeah. just nice and More even. Fast. Especially since he's riding out on it, it's fun to see him singing as it moves slowly towards us. Okay. Uh, we should go get some grace, like it. So, Mark. Yeah. Come until you hit this tape line right here. Stop it, and then this is my. When the end hits this tape line. That's too far, Brian. When the end. Is like a crap. Okay. I can pick, pick a mark and come out to it, stop, and then go down to it. The thing is, we have to hit these spikes because it needs to be in the center in order for the main to close. Yeah. Okay, try to try to get windows on, please. Right, ready? Yes. Um, yours truly, well, maybe. Sincerely, well, how about your friend, Mary? Go!
I'd say that compared to other schools, the tech theater program here is great and it really gives you a chance to dive into professional equipment, professional relationships with people and directors and people who come in and contract our lighting and sound. It's a great opportunity. Um, you're not really on the sidelines watching, but you're more involved in learning skills as you go on that you can take to any other production and use. I was part of the ensemble as well as dance captain and assistant career. Being dance captain showed me that there's a lot more than just dance dance choreography. There's so much more about the movement and um, who's on stage and where they are and symmetry and making the stage feel full and with movement um, even if it's small. And so it was really fun to, to work with Miss Booth and to see the side of that. My favorite rehearsal day was our sits probe. Our sits probe was so cool and if you don't know what that is, it's when the cast sings with the orchestra for the first time and I had never gotten to go to one before and I had watched videos of it on YouTube of like famous Broadway casts doing their sits probes because they film them and uh, it's beautiful because the entire time all you have is just the piano plunking through but the first time you get to sing with like the beautiful orchestra is just completely overwhelming. We work as close to professional standards as we possibly can in, a, in an educational environment. Um, I, and I think my colleagues do too, hold our students to a very high standard. We're really lucky that we have the resources here to work with a really fantastic team of people on faculty and uh, bring in some really great artists from the community to work on the shows as well. And we also have this amazing group of parent volunteers that allow us to work at a very high level. So the work is professional quality, um, or as close as we possibly can make it. This is the night uh, when the show ceases to be ours. We will take notes and stuff, but it's not ours anymore. It is yours. And it becomes yours when you give it to the audience. It is a gift that you give to your community and they want it. They don't want you to mess up. They're here and they're hungry for a beautiful story sung well and acted with passion. They want it and they're willing to meet you halfway. So if you come forward and you bring it to them, it's gonna to come to life. Um, anyone who tells you not to be nervous is a liar and is not to be trusted. <laughs> For me personally, it's it's a send off. I think because where I where I go to college, I the if you're not a musical theater major, where I am going to college. If you're a mus if you're not a musical theater major, you cannot do any musical theater. You can be in plays, but you can't be in musical theater. So at least for a while, this is the last show that I'm gonna do. And I think um, there's kind of some closure in it because in the last scene, um, I'm sent away and. And it's kind of a, yeah, there's, it's, it's closure, I think. The quality and the high standards in which Latin holds for academics and for athletics and for the arts is, is what I love to be a part of. I, I've taught on the college level and I feel like even being here, it's as good a college level or higher in, what, in the role I used to have in, in conducting at a college.
will.